In this video, I'll walk you through how to build a Clon Centaur clone from a kit you can buy from sites like Amazon, eBay, AliExpress or similar sites. Even if you don't plan on building one of these pedals, this video will give you a complete look at what's involved in building a pedal from a kit from start to finish. So let's start at looking at what's included in the kit. The enclosure is pretty good quality and you can see the, the Centaur on the front looks pretty good. And straight away I noticed that the lettering for the three knobs didn't come out properly. I haven't seen this on other kit builds so maybe I was just unlucky. The finishing on this pedal is more of a semi-gloss than an actual gloss like I've seen in other kits. Now if you're thinking about this for your first kit build, it might feel a bit overwhelming when you see all the components, but it's really not too bad. I'll just quickly run through the components just so you get a sense of what's involved in building this pedal. It comes with quite a few wires cut to the same length and you don't need to use all of these. The knobs on this one seem a bit small compared to other kits I've seen. The input and output jacks are both stereo, although you only really need one stereo. The foot switch is pretty decent quality. The pack of resistors are all labelled which is handy. You got your bag of all the other components and you get a DC power jack and a battery clip for this. Now let's have a closer look at the PCB. It's pretty good quality and the labelling isn't too bad. There's a couple of positions that it's not quite clear what the components are, but I'll go through those as I walk through building this kit. You can see the LED symbol on the left, as well as the three pot positions. The pot on the left has six legs, which is easy to tell apart from the other two, which are the same. And again, if this is going to be your first pedal you're going to build, this might look a bit overwhelming. So you can start with something simpler if you want, and then work your way back up to this pedal. But I found it to be a pretty straightforward build. So if you follow the instructions on this video and the guide on my website, you'll have no trouble putting this together. So let's have a look at the components. So you've got your potentiometers. This is the one with the six legs I mentioned. With these, you'll have to file off a little positioning nub that I'll talk about later. There's three types of diodes and a few types of capacitors, so I'll walk you through those later. This is the LED, which comes in a really nice bezel and looks really good once it's installed. And then there's the sockets and IC chips. So overall, it's a pretty good quality kit. That is, until we get to the instructions, or if you can even call this instructions. So you can probably see straight away the problem. Having a black and white instruction sheet just does not work. There are some positions where you can easily figure out where the wires go, but just look at the wiring for the foot switch. How are you meant to figure that out, really? I've seen quite a few people get tripped up by the foot switch wiring, so I created a few color diagrams to show you exactly how to wire everything up on my website. Now this is the page of instructions that comes with the kit, and it's not that bad. It was more than enough when I got stuck in a few places, but it is still pretty basic. Okay, so now that we've gone through everything, let's start with the resistors. The typical approach when building guitar pedals is to start with the lowest height component and build up from there. So we're gonna start with the resistors. So seeing as these are all labeled, just sort them out from lowest to highest. This makes it quick and easy to find the right resistor as you're building your kit. Again, this looks like a lot of resistors, but if you take your time, you'll find that it's not that bad. Now on the PCB, the resistors are labeled with small blocks as shown here. The resistors will use the letter K, R or M. I recommend starting on one side of the board and slowly work your way through in blocks. You can install them one by one if you're feeling a bit nervous about soldering, or you can put them all in at once like some people do, but I'm just doing a few at a time. It's pretty straightforward, you just bend the wires so it fits in like this. If you get confused with reading the resistor values, just check the guide on my website and it'll go through it all. Now if you're going to be installing multiple resistors at a time, the last thing you want is for them to fall out. If that does happen, you'll need to look up the color codes to figure out the values of the resistors. So it's no big deal, but to avoid this altogether, you can carefully bend the legs to make sure the resistors don't slip out from the PCB while you're holding it. Okay, so here's the first few resistors ready to be soldered. Now I'm just pressing the PCB down on some blue tack, I'm not sure what it's called in other countries, just to hold it in position and push the resistors against the board as I solder. If this is your first time soldering, practice on some spare wire before you have a go on the PCB. You can see that I bring in the soldering iron from one side, then I try and touch the solder on the other side of the wire. So here's what you're aiming for when you're soldering. You want the solder joint to be shiny as you can see here. If it isn't, it may not create a good connection and you may have issues with your pedal. You also want to check that the solder completely surrounds the component wire, but not so much that it blobs up on the wire. I explain good solder joints in detail on my guide on the website. So here you can see I'm working on the resistors one block at a time. This makes it a bit easier to manage than trying to do one at a time or doing all of them at once. 
but play around and figure out what's best for you. Alright, so it should be clear that all of this is sped up, so take your time with the solder joints and don't rush them. The last thing you want is to accidentally bridge two connections. So again, you can see the joints are nice and shiny and completely surround the wire. Once you're happy with your solder joints, you can trim the excess wire. So now you know how to work through the resistors, I'll just skip to the end. So here are all the resistors soldered in position. Make sure you don't miss the odd ones out on the top right and on the far left, as you'll see in a sec. Yep, that one there, in the very corner. Now the good thing about resistors is that it doesn't matter which way you install them. Some components you need to install in a specific way, and I'll explain that later. But you don't need to worry about that with these resistors. Okay, so now let's move on to the next components, which are going to be the sockets and the diodes. Now when you install sockets, you'll notice a little notch on one side. This little semicircle cut on the left side you can see here. This little notch helps you install the chips the right way. When you compare sockets and chips, you'll see that they both have notches or circles on one side to help you install them the right way. Match these notches up with a similar looking notch on the PCB. Here you can see that the label for the chip has a similar notch on the right side. If you do happen to install the socket the wrong way, that's no big deal as long as you make sure you install the chip the right way. So always check the label on the PCB before you put your chips in. There's three sockets to install on this clone kit. Here's what it should look like when you install all three of them. Now let's move on to the diodes. There are three types to install on this kit. There are two black and silver ones, two germanium diodes as you see here, with the two lines on one side. And as the instructions say, there's an odd one out, which is this one. On your PCB, you can see the positions for the diodes with the solid line on one side. The odd diode is the one labeled 12V. So match this one up so that the black line matches the solid line on the PCB. Diodes must be installed the right way, otherwise your pedal's not going to work. If you check your black diodes, you'll see them labelled 4001. This matches the label on the PCB. It's the same thing with these diodes, just match the line on the diode with the PCB label. Once you install these three diodes, this is what it should look like. You can solder up one at a time if you want, or you can do all three like I did. It was a bit awkward doing all three at once, so you might just want to take your time and do one at a time. After these three diodes are installed, you've got the two germanium diodes. These are labelled with GE on the diode symbols. Again, you can see there's a bar to show which way to install them. Match the double black lines with the label on the PCB as you can see here. The two diodes face opposite directions, so make sure they don't line up the same way. And same thing, you can install one at a time or just do both at once like I'm doing. So once your sockets and diodes are in, this is what your board should look like. Get in the habit of checking over all of your solder connections before you move on to the next components. So next up are capacitors. We've got these electrolytic ones and these polyester film ones. There are a couple odd ones out, so I'll go through those. The rectangle labels on your PCB are for these capacitors. So this 390NJ capacitor matches the 390N label on the PCB. In the guide I explain what these labels mean because it can get a bit confusing. You can install these capacitors in any direction, it doesn't matter. It's the electrolytic capacitors that need to be installed in a certain direction, and I'll go through that later on. So working down, the next capacitors on the list show up as 68N, and these match these 683J capacitors. You can see what I mean that it can get a bit confusing, but once you learn how capacitors are labelled, it makes it easier to understand how to put these together. Now you probably also have two weird shaped capacitors, so let's jump ahead to those. On your PCB you'll see this 390P, which matches this 391 ceramic capacitor. Again, this capacitor can be installed anyway, so don't worry about the orientation. I'm installing them all the same direction, just to make it easier to read and double check my work. This 821JQ capacitor gets installed on the 820P position. Once you have those two capacitors figured out, the rest are easy to install. Here's what your PCB should look like with all of the yellow capacitors installed. I have some close-up photos on my website if you want to use them for reference. Once you have all of these capacitors installed, the last ones are the electrolytic capacitors. The ones I got with my kit are blue, but they can come in different colours. The main thing with these is that they have a stripe on one side to indicate the negative connection. This helps you figure out which way you need to install the capacitors. On the PCB, you'll see a light side and a dark side. So the dark side's positive and the light side's negative. Start by pushing the long leg, which is positive, through the dark side, and then the short leg, which is negative, through the light side. The PCB makes it easy to understand which way to install them. It can get a bit tight in here, so I recommend installing one at a time. 
So here's what your board should look like with all the capacitors installed. You can see it's a tight fit, but it's okay if these capacitors touch each other. You can see that I've also installed the chips here. The 7660 chip is installed on the far left with the notch pointing up. Then the two TL072 chips are installed in the other two positions as shown. Just make sure that you match the notch or the circles with the direction shown on the PCB. Check out the guide on my website for a clear diagram. Once you've got the chips installed, you're all done with the components and you can move on to start assembling the pedal. So grab out the enclosure, the DC jack, the foot switch and the LED. Let's start with the LED. Remove the nut first and then push the bezel through from the front of the enclosure. Then replace the nut but only hand tighten it because you want the LED legs to face a certain direction. On the PCB, the label for the LED has a flat side shown on the left. This flat side is for the negative connection. The shorter leg on the LED needs to line up with this hole. If you install the LED the wrong way, it's not going to work. So turn the LED until it lines up with the two holes on the PCB. Once you're happy with that, tighten the nut and move on to the power jack. It doesn't really matter which way you install this, but if you want to follow along with the diagrams I have on my guide, just line it up so the top of the jack points up like you can see here. Once you're happy with the position of the power jack, just tighten the nut by hand again. You can tighten all the nuts completely after you've wired everything up and you've tested your pedal. That way if there's something wrong with your pedal, you can easily remove them and figure out what's going wrong. Okay, so after you install the power jack, the next one is the foot switch. Now you could wire the foot switch up first and then install it in position, but you'll probably find it a lot easier to wire it up when everything's mounted in position. The wiring will also look neater if you follow this method. The only thing to keep in mind with positioning the foot switch is that the holes in the nine connection points face vertically. So line your foot switch up like mine. Next are the input and output jacks. Both of these are the same so it doesn't matter which way you install them. I ended up taking the jacks out again when wiring them up as it got a bit cramped so only loosely position them for now. Once you have all of these in position you can start wiring up your PCB. Wiring got a bit fiddly so I'm just going to skip ahead to the end result. So this is what your board should look like after you wire everything up. Now I installed the wires on the back of the board for some reason, but if I were to do this again, I'd do it on the other side. So push the wires in from the front of the board if you want it to be easier for the next stage. Now installing the pots, there are two B103 pots, like you can see here, and a B104 pot, that's the one with the six legs. Now before you install these pots, you need to grind or file off the little positioning nub, or the knobs on your pedal won't sit straight. Once you've done this, you insert the pots from the back of the board. If you have a bit of trouble lining them up like I did, carefully bend the pins to line everything up. Carefully push it all the way through so it sits against the PCB. Try not to force them in so you don't damage anything. Double check that you're installing them from the back of the board, because I've seen some people install them the wrong way and have to redo their soldering when they realize that didn't fit in the enclosure. Now before you solder the pots in position, Position the board in the enclosure and lightly tighten the nuts on the pots. This will ensure that when you solder the pots, that they perfectly line up through the holes. This is a good habit for any PCB mounted pots. As you push the board through, remember that the two LED legs need to go through the holes as you can see here. The problem with soldering the pots in first is that if they happen to be on a slight angle, they may not perfectly line up with the hole. This can cause problems and even damage your board if you try and force them through. So you can completely avoid all of this by positioning everything in the enclosure before you solder them. Only hand tighten the nuts, because the chances are you'll probably want to take the board out at some point to check for any problems. You can see how well the pots are lined up by doing it this way. Now that I know that everything is lined up perfectly, I can solder them in position. Solder all the connection points as well as the extra positioning legs. You'll need to use a lot more solder on those two positioning legs, but it'll help keep the pot in position. If you do need to remove the board later on, the LED will come out of the bezel, so that's no problem. Trim the LED legs to avoid any accidental shorting. Next up is wiring the foot switch. This got a bit messy, so I'm just going to skip to the end. The black and white diagram that came with the kit was absolutely useless, so follow my diagram or what you see here. The positions 1, 2 and 3 match the left side from top to bottom, then 4, 5 and 6 are for the right side from top to bottom. Now with the power jack wiring, just remember that once you wire it up, you can't pull the jack out. So you might want to use longer wire than I did, just in case you need to remove the PCB. Here's what yours should look like when everything's wired up. Follow the detailed instructions and diagrams on my website to make sure you get this right. 
Now for a quick test, connect a 9V battery then plug in a guitar cable to the output jack. You should see the LED light up when you press the foot switch. If it does, great job, at least the power is flowing through your circuit. This doesn't mean your pedal is completely working, but it's a good first test. You can then plug in your guitar and see if it actually works before you finish up your pedal. If your pedal does work, now's the time to go through and tighten up all the nuts as well as add on the knobs. If you turn all the pots all the way down first, it makes it easier to line up the knobs as you like. So as far as a review on this kit, I was impressed by the overall quality and how easy it was to build. Well, apart from the shockingly bad black and white photo and the basic instructions, but overall it was really good. If you do follow the guide on my website, you should hopefully get through the entire pedal build without any problems. But if you do go through it and the pedal doesn't work or you have sound issues, check out the guide for troubleshooting and common mistakes. While I haven't played a real clone yet, I'm really impressed by how this pedal sounds. It works really well when used in front of a tube amp on the verge of distorting. If you use it the wrong way such as plugging into a completely clean amp, you may not see what all the fuss is about. But when used properly, you can understand why there are so many clones out there. There's a lot of hype around this pedal, so being able to build your own version for one hundredth of what the real ones are selling for is a lot of fun. Check out my guide for more detailed instructions and to learn more about the Clon Centaur. I hope you found this video helpful and let me know if you do end up building one of your own. I'll leave you with a quick test of the pedal, but please don't judge the sound of this pedal from this test. This was just something I quickly recorded when testing the pedal out, so you can get a lot better tones than what you're about to hear.